Hello and welcome to another Gameplay Monday on a Tuesday where we review two junglers side by side using split screens and other fancy graphics to look at their early game, mid game and late game decisions, pathings and other tips and tricks that we can learn from them. And in this game we are going to be looking at Kindred vs Karthus, a Diamond 1 MMR game where there will definitely be a battle of the ultimates to see who can come out on top. There is an aggressive start to this game plus a very nice back and forth that comes about later to determine the winner. But just before we get into the gameplay, I want to say that I am now a quarterback partner and have my own club for Caillou's Yggdrasil. Quarterback is a free app that lets you participate in in-game challenges on League of Legends against other members of our club plus other clubs that include many notable content creators. The challenges that you can choose from are max CS, kills, KDA as well as maximum assists and when you win this challenge you will be granted trophies for the club and quarterback coins for yourself and you can use that to redeem all skins in League of Legends as well as participate in raffles. So click the link in the description, join my club, open up the app just before you start a game and let's get the Yggdrasil to the top for Odin. And now we head into our game with the Karthus starting on the blue buff and the Kindred starting on the red buff. The reason here is the Karthus needs his mana to spam as much as possible and he does want to do a full clear. He wants to have good camp clear sequencing in order to get that level 6 for you know that incredible ganking power spike. The Kindred here wants to do red and then invade. They know that Karthus is going to get low, they know that they have that range pressure and so to avoid any pixel bush wards that might be placed they hop over the baron pit wall and head straight into the jungle. Now of course when you do this you are giving up camp clearing time so you better hope to get something out of it because by the time you run into the Karthus as in this situation he's already done his blue and his gromb. Nonetheless, the Kindred goes full on aggressive, forces the Karthus to flash out and is very lucky to sneak away with the large Merc Wolf. Now a lot of times junglers will do this move and then ease up on the pressure, perhaps fall back into their jungle, catch up on the camps, but not in this situation. The Kindred goes straight across mid lane, doesn't care and wants to try and invade the Raptors. The Karthus has done excellent defensive jungling, he's pulled the Raptor camp into the bush which means the Kindred has to commit quite a bit of time and resources just to potentially maybe get a few of the Raptors. They're not going to be able to kill the Karthus when he's playing so defensively. And now this is when the power of lane priority and lane rotations comes into play. The Cassio has mid lane priority obviously because she's pushing and the Lucian and the Zillion do have priority in the bottom lane. So Kindred has advantage in that Cassio can be right there much quicker but the Zillion has proactively moved as soon as the Karthus was pinging that the Kindred was coming to the Raptors. Lucian began to move and then decided to stay and because he decided to stay and it was a bit of a messy skirmish in the river, Kindred is able to get out. Yes, they have to burn their flash which is a great move by the Zillion but you have also given up that first blood. And in that situation if you're Zillion and you knew the support, you know that your ADC didn't want to roam with you at that crucial time in the laning phase. The mid laner has lane priority as well. You going up there by yourself is probably not going to end well considering you are just going to be forced into a 2v1. Karthus won't be able to make up that ground in the time before you die. Which is of course what happens and then Kindred gets the mark on the Scuttle Crab which is a nice RNG spawn for them. Now that's quite an intense early game from the Kindred's perspective. All they've done is the red buff, the large Merc Wolf got on a kill which is nice but not really of their own doing and then secured a Scuttle Crab and a mark. And now once the Kindred falls back and takes their whole blue side jungle, the Kyathus takes his red. Instead of going to Krugs, he doesn't obviously feel he has the HP or resources necessary for that. Heads to the top side to take that scuttle and deny the next mark that will be spawning for Kindred. And as you can see on Kindred's map, that's what happens and they run into each other at Kindred's Raptors. And it was a little greedy of Karthus to think maybe he could sneak those away. Considering Cassiopeia is right there and also again still has lane priority. So it would have been a risky fight and skirmish to engage on. Karthus goes across the mid lane, gets into a blind spot and goes back as does Kindred after completing the Raptors. So both jungles have all camps cleared now except for Krugs and we can highlight the pathing in this next sequence because it sort of determines the late early game phase that gets controlled by one of them. The Karthus upon going and buying heads directly to his Krugs. Now you could understand in theory why because the Raptors should spawn soon enough after his Krugs and then he can do a full clear from bottom to top and be back in time for the second spawning of his blue buff. He wants to get that ultimate because everyone knows there's nothing more skilled than a Karthus level 6 gank. But then again I play Maokai so I don't know I just press W. However despite that line of thinking the Karthus wants to show himself in the bot lane a little bit. Release some pressure, maybe get something there but unfortunately that vision him showing himself gives Kindred complete control of his blue side jungle. And Karthus knowing that's most likely going to be the case heads into Kindred's blue side jungle and places the ward by the grump. But he should have known especially at this stage that the Kindred 
As they met just before they both went back the first time, he could have pressed tab and checked their CS and known they had cleared the whole blue side jungle and there was no need to go venturing off. It's a good ward to give deeper vision, but if Kindred's going to be invading your blue side, it probably will die by the time Kindred actually ends up rotating down there again. Nonetheless, Kratos falls back to his raptors and then will head to his topside jungle. The benefit here is that the Kindred got their mark on the Grump as well, but while it looked like they were going to set a trap for the Kratos, the Maokai in the top lane has died to the Aurelia and there's a huge cannon minion wave pushing up against the tower. And you really don't want to let Aurelia get a huge chunk of damage off there, stacking the gold from the platelets. But you do have to be very careful. Aurelia is level 6 and you are level 4. Kindred's pathing into the tower is already quite risky. However, now there's a huge minion wave and Kindred's playing way too aggressively and up front and ends up dying for no particular reason whatsoever. You can hold the tower and deep push it without essentially sacrificing all the good aggressive moves you've been making so far. And while that happened, Kathus actually got a gank off in the mid lane. The Cassiopeia has just been pushing relentlessly and the ultimate from the Orianna sets up the Kathus to take down the enemy mid laner, but not before an excellent turn, which is of course what Cassiopeia's love to be able to do with their ultimate. The net result of this is that the Kathus can take the Scuttle Crab, which had a mark on it, and then go back to the top lane to kill the Maokai with the Aurelia again. And if you're a jungler and you're interested in completely shutting down a lane, this is one of those things you have to do. If your team has a solo laner who's gotten a solo 1v1 kill, go up again and kill them as soon as you can because that loss of experience, if the enemy is already behind, the fact that they had died and had to go back or TP back by themselves, and then you show up and repeat the process within a short period of time, can hard sideline them for a while. Now, the downside of this, of course, is that the Karthus has to go back now to buy and then head to his blue buff, the Kindred, in the meantime, has taken their red and actually does end up setting that blue buff trap for the Karthus. But not before Karthus conducts a beautiful map aware ultimate, securing himself a kill and an assist. That gives Kindred all the more confidence to set this trap. They know they most likely won't have to wait their own ultimate in order to survive. Now the difficulty here is that because your Maokai is so far behind, and upon retreating from the blue side jungle, you stepped on the Scuttle Vision, Going back in taking the Grump, even though it has your mark, possesses the inherent risk of giving double buffs to Aurelia. Yes, you can take the Grump, but I wouldn't pull it towards the Vortex of Vision. I mean, if anyone comes into the pathways there, you're right in the middle of it. It would have been better if Kindred had pulled it to the top side, because at the very least you can run loops around, use the plant, hop over the wall, it gives you a bit more mobility. In this case, the Aurelia sees them, and there's basically absolutely no escape, and the Kindred ult is wasted, and the Aurelia has double buffs in a lane that she was already stomping. So when you can say that you got the mark and it cost everything, it literally means that. And the subsequent move from the Karthus is to go and take the Kindred's blue in kind, but the Zillion does help out with that. Taking out the furthest objective away from you and then falling back into your jungle is the best way to do it because if he had done his red and then tried to steal the blue, they would have met up and that could have been a absolutely horrible play. In this case, he's fallen back to his red, he's able to secure it, but the Kindred does go for an invade to see if there's any plates to be made and gets vision of the Karthus, who again intelligently paths underneath and away from the Kindred into his top side. He doesn't have the mid lane prior, it's no point trying to contest over camps where the Cassiopeia will be able to come in for 2v1 long before the Ariana will. And this leads to an order of events that will transition the game out of the early phase and into the mid objective focused phase. The Kindred then can take Krugs, do a gank in the bottom lane, loop back around, try another gank on the bottom lane, executing a dive to get the other kill. The Karthus activates his ult to try and pick up a kill on the Ezreal, who luckily or intelligently gets executed by the tower before any damage can afflict him. As a response to this play, the Karthus and Aureli have taken the Krugs, kill the Maokai and take the top tower. Definitely a huge top lane advantage, the Karthus played around it very nicely. The game will now transition into trying to get the Maokai into that team fighting phase where he can still be useful before they have to make some very difficult decisions around Karthus ult, Kindred's ult, and Zillion ult. Because a game can quickly turn back and forth depending on the correct use of those abilities. After this, the next big fight sort of happens in the bottom lane, where with the Kindred dodging Aurelia's skills rendered pointless, because she gets altered by the Zillion and then she is able to escape. And in turn, the Karthus presses his big fat button and kills off the Janna. Kindred wasn't in any position to use their ultimate and probably wanted to save it for a more meaningful skirmish where objectives were on the line. However, due to a lack of vision, Kindred does overstay with his ADC and one of them falls, which gives Karthus the open track to take that dragon. 
and it really is to take that bottom lane tower. So in the end, objectives were lost. Kindred then rotates up to the mid, wastes her ultimate in a fight, dies, but they are fortunately able to get a two for one. However, you have to really be measured in how you use the ultimate with that high cooldown against such teams as Zillion and Karthus. Because of the complex nature in respect to each of their team comps with ultimate timings, the need for intelligent peel and so on, there's a lot of back and forth fights where skirmishes do not necessarily net objectives and when you have taken enough towers sometimes that is the way things go. So we're going to highlight the big plays that end up resulting in a winner. And while I've been saying that, you've seen the Kindred make a nice play on the Karthus to grab a kill on him, use their ultimate to block his ultimate. Unfortunately, he could also not save the Cassiopeia, but Kindred is able to pick up the double. The next phase is that the Kindred's team is running a 1-3-1 push on all three lanes where of course Cassiopeia can shove, but Kindred also has a very nice split push and dueling ability. To that end, Cassiopeia goes back after pushing that wave out on the top side, and Kindred very intelligently backs at just the right moment, because you can see on the Karthus' minimap that the Irelia is rotating down to defend that tower. Because of this, Kindred's team has pushed forward enough that after going back to base and moving into the Baron River where they have total vision control, they can start up the Baron and try and burn it down as fast as possible. They do have a good team come for that. The Karthus is way too obsessed with securing that blue buff before contesting and tries to flash in Smite Steel, but the Baron's already gone, so it's an absolutely useless play. Oriana hits an amazing ultimate in the pit on four people. Kindred just gets their ultimate off, and in turn, Zillion ults the Irelia. So, a lot of ults going on. Karthus was on cooldown and he couldn't use it, and three of Kindred's team were able to skip at the back of the pit, and with the Baron buff no less. And now in the subsequent fight, you can see how neutral these teams can be in terms of cancelling each other out. The Aureli dives into the backline against a Jenna with Exhaust and a Maokai. It, diving into the enemy team isn't always going to work out for you. Karthus ults too soon and Kindred does well not to overreact by using their ultimate to defend that because there's no point, no one would die from this. Zillion has ulted himself, Kindred flashes in to kill the Karthus and then has to burn the Kindred ultimate to save their own lives, but Karthus spams Q from beyond the grave, and ultimately the fight is a whitewash, even with Baron buff, so there's no real objective to be gained, just cancelled out team fights because of the specific picks, ultimates, and kiting abilities. And for any of you dive champion lovers, people who like the Zeds and the Aurelias, the Yasuos, you need to be very cautious and careful about when you engage in dive backlines when you have such ult as Janna, and Kindred on the same team. In this case, in the next fight, what changes the complexion of the game, you probably think Kindred's team has the upper hand, which they do overall. The Maokai is detached from his team, and Irelia dives into the backline, unleashing her fury, which forces Kindred to burn their ultimate. Kyatha shows restraint while farming Raptors casually on the side. He ults, and now basically wins them the team fight because Kindred didn't have ult, they get wiped off the map, and his team, Kyatha's team, can now push up and take an inhib. Because the Baron has just spawned, they can then fall back and take the Baron. A huge gold swing, all because Irelia took an opportunistic dive that forced the expenditure of Kindred's ultimate that let Karthus' ult do maximum amount of damage. This has completely opened up the game for Karthus' team to win, and in a few moments, the Cassiopeia is out of position, which forces Kindred to react with their ultimate because Karthus was just using his death from above, and now both of those are off the map. That can open up a teamfight significantly. Kindred does an amazing job of flanking up from underneath, forcing the Karthus Zonyas, and then an incredibly timed Janna ult pushes the Aurelia away from the Kindred who also flashes, and that creates a lot of space between them, and lets Kindred, because of the build which you will see shortly, to unleash an insane amount of damage from the sides while being relatively untouched. Aurelia does Aurelia things and dives basically into the fountain, and ends up losing her GA and life as well. So as you can see, the greed from Karthus to use his ultimate there, yes it burned the Kindred's ultimate, but what it would have been more useful in terms of ending the game. Sometimes a bit of patient is quite useful. And basically you've seen the power that these defensive and peeling team comps can have against each other. Ultimately, and rather anticlimactically, the game comes down to Karthus split pushing and being caught out. After that one fight where Kindred's team was able to secure an inhib, the mid laner had seen the Karthus roaming up to the top lane, pushing that wave, hidden a bush and punishes him for blindly pushing up that far. You don't really need to do that as Karthus, you need to wait for your team. The worst thing you can do in this game is get caught out on a side lane, especially with the amount of damage that you can dish out. And because of this death and because it's so late in the game, given the nature of the team comp and the fact that they have mid inhibitor pushing, Kindred's team is able to end. 
Thank you very much for watching. I hope you're able to learn and enjoy something at the same time. Please like, share, and comment if you did. It really helps push the video across YouTube. Consider joining us on YouTube to become an official member of the community. Subscribe for more League of Legends videos coming very soon. And as always, I will see you all in the next tutorial.